Beautiful looking morning. Super duck going by those trees, Irvin. Big okay. canvas back. I got the wrong gun for him. <laughs> I'm going after the big one today. Yeah, when I get the moose this morning, I can feel it. It's a perfect morning for it. We, we had uh, some cold temperatures last night. See all the mist in the water. And those moose are definitely going to be in those cutovers. We're going to go up on that uh, side road, the uh, woods road? Yeah, it's just down the road, about a quarter mile. A lot of cutting, a lot of logging was done there years ago. So we got a lot of cutovers and trails. And the moose should be up there this morning. You I had some, a good feeling. You saw some moose up there last week? I saw two last week, a cow and a calf. Sounds interesting. Some signs are really good. Good. Canvas back is still there, huh? Mm -hmm. Newfoundland Sportsman with Dwight Blackwood and Paul Amundsen. On today's show, Dwight and Paul will be hunting for the biggest of Newfoundland's big three, the majestic moose, one of the largest of its species in the world. They'll be hunting for this noble animal just off Mackinson's Road in Moose Management Area 34, Beta Verde. Making sure Dwight's sights aren't set too high, we'll visit with Terry Wall of Magnum Gunsmithing. We'll demonstrate the proper procedure for sighting in your rifle. They look fresh, Dwight. When I say this this morning, it's, you know, it's, it's a good sign too. It's not the same ones we saw before because there's no calf tracks around here. It's just these. And you know, they're not as pointed either as the other ones we saw before. Yeah. So this is a bull. So that's probably a bull going, still heading into that cutover. Actually, it looks bigger too. The tracks look bigger, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a real good sign, huh? Isn't it? I say we're going to be in for a successful day, you know? Well, that's twice now we've seen. Uh, Tracks of three animals, right? Well, this is only about a quarter of a mile away from where we saw the other ones. That cutover is just around this bend. You can see how smooth that is, too. Yeah. Oh, that's this morning's guaranteed. Yeah, that's smooth. Guaranteed. Yeah. Look how sharp it is going down here, right? Yeah. yeah. Got to be extremely quiet now, right? Don't make a sound. Don't scuff your feet. Now, the, the cutover area we're going, you say that's where they frequent mostly? So you got two large cutovers. You got a cutover on the right hand side, mm. and on the left, just up the road a little ways, you got another large cutover. And the moose come from left to right. You know, if it's downwind, they come from left to right, mm -hmm. which is perfect for us because the wind's blowing out this way. So if they're going to come, they're going to come from the upper cutover to the lower one, which we're going to go to first. And what do they do? Feed there? Yeah, you, know, you got a lot of young trees. So plus the moose is like a human. I mean, they take the path of least resistance. So if if they've got a marsh that they can skirt, or if they've got a cutover that they can go across, that's the way they're going to go, the providing the safety element's still there, right? I mean, obviously, they walk the roads. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's path of least resistance. I mean, yeah. what would you do? Yeah, it's true enough. Uh -huh. yeah. You say you can hit something for 300 yards? No, sweet. No, you actually. Actually, 300 yards is a nice little distance away. I've shot them further. I've shot them close to 400 yards, but you shouldn't shoot at anything that you think you might have a chance of missing anyway. That's a 308? That's a 308 Winchester pump action. Dandy gun. She's, she's small. She's not heavy. I've got a four power scope on it. Some people prefer seven or eight power, but I think most of the time when you're shooting that moose, you're shooting at something 300 yards away, which is pretty well maximum. Yeah. You know, you're going to do well with a four power scope. Well, it's a small gun, though. I mean, to hit something, like kill a moose from 300 yards. Buddy, I tell you, they got something wild up in that. You nail a moose with that with a soft point. 
bullet is just going to mushroom in and it's going to do a lot of damage if uh, you don't hit it in the vital area. You know, if you start hitting the bone inside, a lot of times it'll ricochet back and forth and you'll try to moose right up inside. I've thrown away almost a full quarter of moose before by the bullet ricocheting inside. So I guess you don't want an overpowerful gun if you're going to kill a moose. I mean, you want it powerful enough, but not overpowered, right? So you've got a combination of uh, grains as well in your bullet power. Like what I'm using here today is a 308 with 180 grains of killing power. Mm. It gives you so many foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Okay. Now, it's illegal to have something which is powered too, too little because that way you've got a tendency, if you do shoot an animal, you know, there's a good chance that you're not yeah. going to kill it because you just don't have the penetration power. Now, caribou I've shot with a 30-30 before, just like the old-fashioned Western guns, you know, with the lever action? Lever action, yeah. yeah. yeah but they don't have near the killing power for 308. You must have had a lot of guns over the years. Well, oh, everything from a pellet gun to well, up to 308, 30 add 6, 30 30, 303, mm -hmm. all kinds of shotguns. See. Would it be that, much, that's much of a kick for me? Now, when you get used to it, I mean, to an, an experienced person, a novice, he's going to find a fair bit of kick, especially with a 180 grain bullet. And you can get the grains going up to 220 and more. You'll find a fair bit of kick to it. Smaller than I thought it was, though, I must say. I was surprised by you know, it. When you're big game hunting, like we're doing now. Probably one of the most important things you can do is before you even go after your animals, check your sights out. You know, your gun could fall during the off season and it might be twisted, your scope might be twisted in, in its holders. Anything at all could drive your aim off. So make sure that when, when you go up, you're gonna you gotta have an accurate gun. You yeah, jump. it's gotta be accurate. You know, the last thing you wanna do is maim an animal. Terry, what are you doing with all that squinting for? Oh, what squinting. is he doing with the gun? <laughs> I'm trying to line your iron sights up with the scope. I can't see down the barrel where it's a pump gun. It doesn't look too bad. We need a minor adjustment, so I'll take off your scope caps and see if we make an adjustment. Caps. First time I ever used a, a gun with a scope, I thought you just had to turn those knobs. No, I didn't realize no. the mechanism was inside. All the caps are there to protect your uh, horizontal vertical adjustments. If you look at it, you'll see their little arrow pointing up. So yeah. you want to bring the bullet up, or you want to make an adjustment, you turn in upward direction. On the side, it says right and left, bring the bullet to right or left. Very simple. Okay, so this is the, the horizontal one, and yep. this is the vertical one. That's right. Very simple. I bet you I'm not the only guy that tried to oh, God, no. adjust people, the scope using the caps. People come in with the scopes. Huh? Yeah, they come in, they, they take the caps off, and they're amazed, you know, what's under there. I and mean, then some that, uh, one problem is that there's a neutral adjustment here. You'll find some people who take this screw and turn it all the way to a stop, and they'll force it a bit more. Yeah. And by doing that, you can cause you know, damage to your scope. So best thing to do, if you've got to make an adjustment and you turn it, just put a little pressure on it. When it brings up, stop. That means that you haven't gotten the right set of mounts on. You might have getting shimmed or changed your mounts okay. around. Those anyway, are permanent yeah, mounts I've got on there. Uh, what you have on there, you have one piece see-through mounts, which is a good thing to have because your scope breaks, you fall and drop your gun, you can still get your iron sights. That's right, exactly. I did have a flip-over yeah. mount some years yeah. ago, but I used to find that that would cause this to be off considerably. Yeah, well, if you've got tip-off mounts on it, your scope is hanging to the side. If you fire the gun, right. there's a lot of vibration going into your scope. And a lot of vibration goes into your scope, you can cause a thing called parallax, which will give you a false image in your scope. Yeah. It'll do a lot of damage. You can imagine a heavy caliber like a 308 going off, all the vibration taken from side position. Yeah. So it'll cause a lot of damage. Anyway, it looks yeah, like it's pretty well on bit, paper. So. so what I'll do now, I'll have a few shots and see where we're going and make some adjustments then. There you go. I think she's shooting a small bit to the left. Okay, we'll have a look now. We'll fire one bullet and we'll see what happens. We can make an adjustment then if you need it. Stand behind you. Okay. Safety out. Let me get it all ready. Oh, she's off to the right. 
No, the reason she's off the road, you said she might be off the left. When yeah, I put her up on the board, I, I made adjustments, eh? Oh, okay. So I probably moved her over a little bit. Yeah, she's off. Uh, so one, once, once the right. I made that adjustment, probably, you know, when okay. you said it, she could have very well been off the left. So anyway, oh, the vertical right. seems fine. It's just, yeah. it's just a horizontal. Yeah. Eh? We'll, we'll bring her over a bit now. We get a comb to the right. Or bring to the left. We'll try a couple things. One, two, three. So you don't have to move that very much at all in order to make. You no, know, so you're, gonna you're, that you're one in, you're one in uh, two inches from the center. Yeah. To the right side. See where her puts us. Well, when she sighted in here, now she's gonna be just right for 100 yards. Hey, buddy. Yeah. And what I may do, we'll see what happens. And what I may do is just elevate her a little small bit, so you'll be good for a longer shot. Okay. Okay. It's a uh, center, center, but yeah. it's a little small bit low, so I'm going to elevate it. It's a small bit. Okay. What you got here at this distance, what we should have, we should have it at least inch, inch and a half high at this distance. That'll put it pretty well on a two hundred. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to come up just a small bit. You say it put me on at what distance? At fifty yards, hundred and eighty grain bullet. Uh, but inch and a half, inch and a half high, it'll put you on center about 200 yards. Yeah, that's not bad, I mean. No, no, it's good, but, it's but the thing is, you're talking... you will see a moose going along a bog, which might be quite some distance out. Yeah, so. well, you're talking plus or minus uh, two inches up to... No, yeah. but plus or minus four inches up to uh, 200 yards, so which yeah. is... You're looking at the vital area. 200, really 250 bad. yards, you can pretty well get away with. So up to 250 bad. yards, if, if you're talking, a, a, you know, a plus or minus four inches, it's... Nothing. Nothing, no, you had a big, you know, big killing zone of probably 16 inches, so it's... Okay. No. Try her again now. Bring her up just a little bit. And I'm going to bring her another little yeah. spot to the left. See where it is, see where it is. Now that's just a little bit above center, just a touch to the right. Where you want it. And the best thing to do now is you try, you try a few shots and then I can do the final testing for yourself. Okay. You want to try glasses? Well, this is 200 yards. No. Okay. Yeah, I should put those on. Yeah. So now we'll show, see what happens. And this is what I do with everybody. And then when you leave here, you know you're going to side in so you can't complain. <laughs> You want my shooting vest? No, I think I'll pass it for okay. now. Okay. But I'm gonna get a moose tomorrow, I hope. And oh, I if hope I don't, do. I can't blame it on Terry Wall. <laughs> no, don't blame me. Everybody else blames me. <laughs> do you think that moose we heard is in this area? Oh, that moose is definitely in this area. You can tell by the distance and the sound. And we've got two large cutovers here. We've got one right in front of us. And we have another one just up this trail for about a quarter of a mile. They almost join together. Wind's blowing perfectly. It's coming right down this way. So if there's a moose up there, he's going to be heading in our direction. So we'll have a look in here, huh? He'll be coming down this way. So I'm getting right excited now. Huh? Go ahead, you got to go.
still calling. He's coming right down. Okay. Yeah, look. Look, he's coming. There he is. He's coming right towards us. Do I? I got him, I got him, I got him. Pop the heaven. What? what time is it? Quarter past eight in the morning. <laughs> Don't waste no time, do we? Or what? All right. Congratulations. Nothing to it. Nothing, nothing to, to it. it at all. What are we there? Young bull. I say, but you know, mm -hmm. last year's calf. Yeah. He's not a bad animal, though. I mean. What would he weigh now? Well, I say he's a good 300, 350 for sure. He's a fair size, but he is. I'm surprised when you called him that he came down. Jeez, so was I. <laughs> uh, I couldn't believe it. That's the one we heard way back there this morning, yeah. right? Oh, man. Yeah, you see, you see the horns just starting to come up there. Yeah, look. little starts there, huh? Yeah. On each side. Now, too bad he didn't have a, a big set of racks on it. Yeah. Well, you can't eat racks. Huh? You can't eat the racks. I would have preferred to have gotten a big bull, but I mean, see, you can't pass up the opportunity. No. You mightn't see a, you mightn't see a bull anymore. You know. I, but this is a nice animal. He's not a bad size. There's lots no. of meat here. Yep. Loads of meat there. Yes, sir. There's nice no animal, better man. meat than, was, than last year's calf. No, I was going to say, you a know. calf's probably, probably nicer meat, isn't oh, it? Oh, tender. I mean, it'll melt in your mouth. You don't, you don't need a knife to cut it up. You can cut it with a fork. Mm. Oh, it's good meat. Real good meat. A lot of good feed in this area. See, this was all cut over once upon a time. You've got yeah. cut, cut overs everywhere. And you've got lots of feed, so... Any moose that are around here, they're not being disturbed. Plus, they're feeding well, so there's no reason for them to leave. And like you were saying too, there's not a lot of hunting up here. None of the no, guys are up no. for rabbits or ducks or anything I, disturbing them, right? I can't understand that, you know, because every time I come in here, I've seen loads and loads of moose tracks, if not moose. And I've yet to see a moose hunter, other than myself all, and a brother-in-law. We've been up a, a number of times up for the cabin, just coming out getting wood and whatnot. And we've always seen tracks, everywhere yeah. we've always seen tracks. So like you say, I'm surprised. Well, you want to do the honors and bleed him, or? Huh? Show you. Show us how it's done, this son. You're not going to do it, eh? It's one of the first things you got to do when you uh, shoot an animal is, is to bleed him. Because if not, it's a situation where the blood just Coagulates, builds up in, suppose, yeah. Yeah, builds up in the stomach. And you don't want to waste too much meat either, so, you know, cut them close to the close to the head. Well, this is a job that you can forget unless you had a good sharp knife. No, I bet. Huh? And you always want to bring a stone with you too because the hide in this is so thick that no matter how good your knife is, you're gonna, yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna get it dull. And when you got a dull knife and you're trying to quarter a moose and skin it later on, well, gee, you can, you can be at it four no, times. I can imagine it's a job in itself anyway, even with a sharp knife. It is, boy. I mean, just look how thick that is, you know? Yeah. Right? Pays to uh, go out and buy a good knife that's going to keep his edge. That's the key to it, is keeping his edge. You can buy lots of knife, knives that are sharp, so you make a few cuts, and then you're into a situation where you get your edge gone in no time. <laughs> More fun shooting me. Right. <laughs> the adrenaline's still pumping. Yeah. yeah. You know, I wasn't expecting to see something as early as, early as, as we did this morning. No. Next year, I gotta get the license. I wanna shoot one next year. Guaranteed. You'd love to do this, wouldn't you? I would've liked yeah. to shoot him. <laughs> I don't know about this, but I would like to shoot him. For sure. Just haul him down there a bit. Let him drain. Come on, buddy. Oh. 
Now your kids won't have to go hungry to winter? <laughs> huh? No, that's for sure. Tie his legs and tie it over a stump back there so I can... Same in front, or...? Yeah, same in front, so I can get his uh, legs open and start punching him. You cut, you cut back first and check this is chest here. A lot of people say you should wash your meat. You know, unless you've broken the intestine or stomach wall or something of that nature, it's better not to wash your meat because by washing it, you're destroying the membrane that's covering the meat. It's better to let that membrane dry out even though you might have twigs on it, even though you might have fur on it. By doing that, you're protecting the meat. First time I ever shot a moose, I was with a friend of mine. Neither one of us had too much of an idea about what you should do to quarter up an animal. So I shot a calf similar to this size. And we started to clean it. I knew it was between the second and the third rib. I can, re I can recall reading it. She went down from, from, oh, the, top. from the top. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I started. I started to do it between the second and third. And I said, "Gee, that don't look right." I said, "They must have had a piping mistake or something in that." So I went down a bit further. But when I quartered here, I had these big, long, stringy pieces on the hind quarter. Oh. <laughs> Little small front quarters. <laughs> Off his leg. Now that entitles me to a crest, successful moose hunter, nineteen ninety five. For the outdoor enthusiast, Newfoundland and Labrador offers excitement second to none, and the Newfoundland Sportsman magazine brings that excitement home to you. Subscribe now and begin enjoying interesting and informative features with exceptional photography, focusing on every aspect of our great outdoors. Order now and receive six issues a year for the low price of only $21.35, or subscribe for two years and get 12 issues for only $38.04 and save 25% off newsstand prices. The Newfoundland Sportsman Magazine, outdoors at its best. So, buddy, you said you didn't want the duck this morning. You wanted a moose. <laughs> no. Well, you got it. You deliver it. You deliver it quickly. No time at all. I think you must be a lucky charm for a change. There you go. Because it's the earliest time that I've shot a moose in the morning. We've only gone, well, a couple of hours. And this is the first day of, that I've hunted this year for a big game. Oh, was no trouble at all. I mean, when you started calling him, I couldn't believe it. He came right down. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. You couldn't believe it. I figured when I started calling, he'd probably go in the other direction. But he kept on coming, kept on coming, so I kept on calling. And he kept on calling back to you. Uh, yeah. And he walked straight down. Couldn't believe it. I was amazed. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> I think you're going to get some ribbon from the boys on that one. I think so. I want to thank Terry Wall of Magnum Gunsmithing for joining us this week. And I want to thank you for joining us this week. But before we leave, I want to show you a moment that we had this morning that was even more exciting than getting the moves. Very special. Very special. Easier to do. You had about a foot of neck on that one. Yeah, I, I would say so. Hey, Durham, what are your thoughts at this moment? <laughs> Nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. You beat it like a son of a gun. You, you thought this was ugly. I got the keys. You got the keys. I got the keys. Got the keys. You you Good luck, Durham. Thank you. Any more thoughts at this uh, crucial moment? Just gotta get out of here. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring you over to the path, Okay. And I'll just stay on the main one. 
I'm nervous, I know. <laughs> what a day, what? Oh, yeah. Well, I got your hey, moose and the baby. Got your uh, baby. Listen, I wouldn't rush, but she's probably got uh, 15 hours waiting, yeah. Good luck, sir. Good luck. Okay. Yeah. Bring it back a little sportsman. <laughs> Wrong leg. Huh? Wrong leg. <laughs> uh, you tube. Yeah, I thought you wanted to. <laughs> what do you want? Just the one? Just the one, but it's open them up. <laughs> I thought you wanted to sort of stretch them. Oh, is it? Uh, I think we got something good for the show. I'm tired. Get him out! Get him out! Where is he? Get him out! Where is he? Get him out! Get him out! Get him out! <laughs>